I'm so excited this year because what we have done is we've been invited to accept this award to a person who has dedicated her whole life to being an example of teaching dignity. Her whole life, in every step of the way, and most of all, in her work recently, at Everyday Dignity. And let me read a little bit about her. Katia Cohen work spans an amazing range. So whatever I, I, I want to know, if, if I leave something out, I expect you to add it to it, Claudia. <laughs> Claudia has been an educator, a conflict resolution practitioner, and an organizational uh, consultant who has navigated the rugged rapids of academia, <laughs> Fortune 500 companies, and the nonprofit sector. Uh -huh. Amazing. She is the founder and president of the Third Alternative, a consulting group with expertise in dialogue and facilitation, organizational justice, mediation, and conflict management. She has taught at the Stevens Institute of Technology and has been on the faculty of Rutgers University Social Organizational Psychology Program at Teachers College and is a past associate dean of the Morton Deutsch International Center for Cooperation and Conflict Resolution. Her research interests have included the cognitive basis of stereotypes and participatory action research. And she's led a five-year project exploring the practices that support successful re-entry after prisons. Claudia's secret, or I was going to say secret, current interests. <laughs> of dialogue to promote individual and societal change, and she serves on several racist, racial justice committees and boards in New Jersey. Today, she co-directs the Dialogue Circles on Race, which bring black and white citizens into conversations that take an unflinching look at the history of racial oppression and, the, and that encourage listening with empathy to stories across differences. In collaboration with others, she has a goal of creating a statewide network of community-based anti-racism organizations. Today, Claudia writes and speaks about everyday dignity, which she believes is a necessary component of functioning a functioning democracy. Claudia's life and efforts not only teach us about everyday dignity, she teaches us that we can all teach dignity every day. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Claudia, we're gonna make we're gonna I just give you a I have to get up at some point. You will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Just so you know, we have some very distinguished people that have received the Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm busy my remote, but I will find it. Um, Lifetime Achievement Award, including starting with Morton Dorich and Ann and Bert White Brown, Jean and Mike Miller, and look at these folks, Michael Perlin. You're in front of it. I am in front of it. That doesn't help. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Uh, and most recently, Janice Person. And now we're going to sell out of Claudia Cohen. And her wonderful work, here's some of the pictures from her participation in our workshop. And also, she just published her chapter in our book, which keeps floating around here, on human dignity, which is a tribute to Evelyn Linder, edited by Michael Britton and Chippewa Chowdhury. And there she is with her Dignity Beacon and Dignity Award. This is a wonderful radio interview where she talks about her everyday dignity. We'll make sure everybody will be able to listen to that at some point. And um, one of the interesting things about Claudia, as soon as we asked if she would accept this award, she immediately told us that she would like to change the name of it, but in a really good way. And I'm going to have her do the explanation of that. And we're going to make her, before we present the award, we always give her an opportunity tell her story. So please welcome Claudia Cohen.
this damn bad. <laughs> um, so when, thank you so much. Um, I thought I was overwhelmed when Evelyn and Linda asked me, um, that they told me they'd like to honor me with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Now I'm really overwhelmed. <laughs> this is your life. Um, but the reason I suggested that I'd be more comfortable with a different title is, well, a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, I'm not nearly old enough for lifetime achievement, so clearly that was <laughs> um, But then also, um, I don't think dignity is something you can achieve. I don't think it's competitive or cumulative. I think it's something you can be committed to. And so I asked if it could be the Lifetime Commitment Award. I felt more comfortable with that. So, and they were kind enough to humor me on that. Um, so my reaction, as I said, I was overwhelmed. At first I thought there must be some mistake. Then I realized, you know, lifetime, lifetime, that can't be possible. But then finally, and this, uh, with some help, some, with help from some friends who I chatted with about this, I decided to accept it as a, I mean, I wasn't going to reject it, but to accept it as a um, platform, to, to recognize that I could lean into having a platform to put out there my observations and reflections and thoughts about dignity. I've been doing that, but this gave me that extra little push, so I'm going to do it more. Um, so if you wouldn't mind imagining a platform, and on that platform I would put up a banner and I'm going to limit myself to three bullet items, which is really hard, so good for me. Um, the first one would be notice and name acts of dignity. I don't think we, unless we have a name for something, we often don't see it. Um, and dignity, I think, operates at multiple levels, at uh, the micro level, Interpersonal dignity. This is something that got echoed in uh, our anti uh, violence work that we talked about yesterday. And also at the macro level, structural, and people who alluded to oppression, which is uh, you know, the cousin of uh, structural or macro indignity. So I've gravitated as a cognitive social psychologist to thinking and writing about micro acts, of, interpersonal acts of dignity recognition. Uh, which I referred to, as Linda said, as everyday dignity. And this was in response to the phenomenon of the, the notion of microaggressions, which was popularized by a man whose office is just around the corner, Daryl Wing Su. Um, and it, it occurred to me that if small acts can harm or damage dignity, and he's identified micro-insults and micro-assaults, which aren't really maybe micro, um, but micro validations, where you treat someone as if they're not there, they're not worthy, they don't count, they're not in our group, well, then small acts should be able to confer or acknowledge data. Right? There must be antidotes to microaggressions. So that's what I've been experimenting with in noticing micro actions that I believe, as a conserver, confer um, confer slash recognize others' dignity. And I collect stories, and I write blog posts about it, about the power of small acts. I think we often underestimate how small things reverberate into our you know, psychological um, experiences and become very big, and they trigger other things. Um, I also think it's important to collect stories and nod to both Lou and Avi, who talked about the power of stories. Uh, I think that's the way you learn. So I'm always looking for examples um, of the power of small acts. So if you have any good stories, please send them my way. The second thing on my banner would be doing dignity. Doing dignity, what is the verb? Um, the way that I sort of struggled over, is it conferring or recognizing? What is it when we you know, appreciate, notice, don't take away someone's dignity. And I think we benefit from having a term, um, maybe agreeing on it would be a stretch, but at least uh, some of us might choose to use a term that means 
conferring, acknowledging, validating dignity. And in the recent chapter in the book for Evelyn, I suggested uh, to dignify as a verb. Now, that already has some connotation, which isn't the connotation that I want to imply. Um, but I think the definition I would like to promote is more important, so I'm going to stick with it. Uh, but anyway, that's, so how can we know we're doing it if we don't have a verb that means basically to do dignity? So that would be the second um, bullet, the verb of dignity on my banner. And then the final one is the practice of dignity. I was reminded by today's program, I thought the morning was so moving and powerful and complex and, and yesterday as well. And the richness of the varying uh, perspectives and experiences and disciplines and uh, people who are doing the theorizing and people who are doing the direct service. Um, and I feel so enriched by all the pieces of this dignity puzzle, sort of shifting kaleidoscope. Um, and I've come to believe that uh, trying to pin it down, clarify, narrow, is A, not possible, and B, probably not wise. So um, I'm thinking more about that dignity is a practice, and maybe collectively we can continue that practice. Uh, maybe we can shine light on a particular angle or dimension. Um, but but at, at its core, I think the practice of dignity, like any other spiritual practice, is a life time commitment to nurturing, naming it, and being inspired by your own commitment to embody it. So I thank all of you who do this work, who make the conference possible, who support it. Um, it's such a rare and wonderful um, place to be.
As time goes, you find you depend on your feet. Gracias.